just spotted the biggest one. He's really nice. I'm gonna go get my gun. You know, I think we gotta start thinking like bears. And he's like, get over here. Buck right there. Oh, wow, look at this one. He's down now. <laughs> Nobody's gonna come and save you. We are on our own. Dr. Hey! Well, here we are, day before the opener of Archery Elk in Montana. This is a, a hunt that I've, I've been excited about since Michael and I drew the tag. We applied as a party. Llama. These are llamas. You see it? It's a pretty easy tag to draw as a resident. You should draw it every year or two, maybe three at the most. It's actually been almost 10 years since I've hunted back in here. What, what is still the most fond elk hunt of my entire life, I always will be. It was the year after my dad died. My son Matthew was 15. He drew a rifle tag in here. Matthew shot what I think might still be the biggest bull in the family. And me and him and my brother packed it out of there without llamas. We're gonna go camp right on that bone pile. Right. Even though there's no bones left 16 years later. It's been such a special place to me that I wanted to share it with some of my crew. They have the same passion for wild places that I have. So this is my fifth season working for Randy and archery is something that I started hunting as a 20 year old. I love shooting my bow, it's super therapeutic for me and uh, it's just a ton of fun chasing these critters with archery equipment. This is pretty sweet. <laughs> We're just walking up here. I thought I heard a bull bugle back there a couple times, but I don't know if it really was or not. But Dale looked down and saw a couple of elk. All right, now we see a bunch of cows and a couple of spikes. Cow, spike, spike, cow. Spike, cow, cow, spike, cow. The bull has just stepped up on the skyline to the left here. It's coming with that cow. The downside is they're only about a half mile from where we plan to camp. They're kind of walking that way too. That's pretty sweet though, being able to see some elk on the walk in. You guys ready to go now? You done eating? You a bunch of goofballs? Never have seen that many in one group. That's insane. There's a couple Big nice bulls out there. Yeah. A couple bugles. September 4th. Whoa. You shoot the big one. I'm <laughs> shooting the first legal thing that comes within 30 yards. This is exciting. This is exciting. <laughs> If you're like me, and a big part of why you hunt is the people and the landscapes and the conservation story, this landscape has it all. Lewis and Clark came, you know, not too far from here. And the indigenous tribes that, that lived here and those peoples and how they hunted bison and, and how they hunted the, the sheep that lived along the, the river breaks and up onto the benches and such. It's, it's just a remarkable place.
This is a completely different landscape than I've ever hunted before. Um, mostly, the only times I've ever hunted this uh, ponderous pine kind of country, rolling breaky hills, is for turkeys. A lot of times when we're hunting the mountains and it's heavily timbered, uh, you're calling a lot and you're hoping that you can pick up a bugle. Uh, here, I think we're gonna be able to get on ridges, looking down into these cuts and find elk. There were a couple raghorns that kind of broke off and a couple cows that uh, went up this drainage and, and we decided to make a play on them. These bulls are sparring with each other and uh, Randy's behind cow calling, cow calling, cow calling, trying to pull them in. Dude, that one's a nice bull. There's a nice bull down there. And they kind of, you know, they, they stuck around for a little bit and sparred a, a little bit more. And that one on the left, I would for sure shoot. Uh, however, they did wind up going over the ridge. I don't know if they, I don't know if they smelled they us. They smelled and strong. They would have just took off out of here. Yeah. Yeah, but just about every elk we saw. It's about next day, so. Yeah. So we're kind of following along, following along, being on the periphery, hoping that in this process, one of those younger bulls will spin off or trail behind and you can call them in. We're gonna have to wait and yeah. see what they do. I'd agree with that. The thing you're up against is they feed into the wind and then they go and bed into the wind. So you're kind of having to trail along behind them because if you get in front of them, obviously you're gonna blow them out. They're gonna smell you. All of a sudden this hunter comes from up above and he's talking to Michael. He just had a cool encounter. <clears throat> There's some other hunters up the ridge. They had seen another group of elk. Well, they saw us glassing these elk. Come to find out they're watching one group of elk or watching a different group of elk. So neither of our plans were gonna interfere with the other, but it was just very polite for somebody to come and say, hey, this is what we're gonna do, just so you know. We go up and we peek over and there's the bull, there's the bull right there. Here comes this young raghorn and he's standing there just looking. I'm hidden behind a tree and he's like, looking. It's a nice, like, you know, raghorn. Like something that I'm happy to shoot. Spots us. And uh, he was gone. Whew, that'd have been 30 yards right there where I was gonna shoot him. And we didn't let an arrow go. You know, neither of us had a shot we were comfortable with, but it was fun. It's what we came here to do, is to chase out. Fortunately, he did, all he did was told all the other ones, hey, stand up, and now we see how many out are actually there. I know, there's a couple really, really nice bulls in there. But they're up moving, now we have a steady thermal, so we gotta keep our, stay close to them, stay close to them and we might be able to call one of those bulls out of there. They're out getting a drink right now. And then they're gonna either come up in this drainage or that drainage when they come in bed for the day. They stay away from any cover by 100 to 200 yards. So we keep going and hopping and trying to get in front of them. If we get to those trees before they get too far this way, that's our jam. Yeah, I like it because I think that's where they're gonna bed. Like, I feel like they're gonna bed real close in there. And we're just waiting and waiting and waiting and they don't show up. It's like, well, where'd they go? There's, there's some elk walking this way. 
There's a cow and a spike and a couple other elk walking this way. Yeah, I feel like if we're down here, they're gonna smell us. Like if we're down at this point, they're gonna smell us. And they keep coming and coming and coming. And they just go right past us, but they're way out there. There's no cover. They're out there 200, 250 yards. This cow calling like crazy. This is a uh, really sweet country. Thanks for taking me here. This is very cool. Michael's worked for me now for over four years. You're gonna be hard pressed to find a better guy than Michael. And one of the exciting things for me was to see the enthusiasm that Michael and Dale had for all the places. Hopefully someday when I'm long since gone, these guys will be up here advocating for places like this. Wind is cooler. That way we gotta let them get up further. These elk are just acting really hesitant about going up to where they bedded yesterday. They're just standing along these edges here, all bunched up. They are on high alert as if something's got them concerned. Well, we look up and up above us, there's a couple hunters with a dog. And with the thermals, the thermals are coming off the ridge right down to them. But that explains why with this downhill thermal, though the elk were so hesitant to come up where they went yesterday. Uh, and then the elk go around the corner out of our sight. Once we finally got on top where we could see a bunch, we saw some of them crossing the river. We saw a couple bulls crossing the river. Well, Michael, I wonder where they got to. Hard saying, not knowing. We saw a couple run across here. I don't know if those are part of our group or not. I kind of want to say they probably were, but where'd the other ones go? And now we see two other hunters on the ridge, and then we see two hunters down below. So you want my prediction? Yeah. My prediction is all those hunters over there are gonna bump them and we're gonna hear some meow, meow, meow. and they're gonna come right across down low on those first lowest ridges mm. and you're gonna put an arrow on one right down there. All right. And we're sitting there, uh, see a few meal deer and Dale whispers to me, hey, hey, there's a cow and two calves down here below us. Michael and Dale had seen these other hunters chasing these same elk. And I see this cow drop. Oh, they shot one. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Someone shot that thing right out there in front of us about 200 yards. Where'd the other ones go? Down here. And they come running right below this big ledge that's, that we're standing on. It's two calves uh, standing there and looking around. But it wasn't what I wanted to do at that time. And that's the beauty of hunting. You who have the tag, you get to decide when you want to pull the trigger or let the arrow go. And right then and there on that really hot, hot day, early in the hunt. Good luck. <laughs> go find your herd. You know, those calves will hook up with the herd again and they'll be fine. Well, we're gonna hunt our way back to camp. Nothing showed up here in this spot. And we knew most of the hunting pressure was out that way. The hope was that as the elk kind of traveled that way, they'd bump into some of that pressure and they'd come back this way. Unfortunately, instead of coming back this way, they went that way. <laughs> and that way is in a different unit that we don't have a tag for. No. 
and you know we didn't know it at the time but that was the last time we were going to see those elk in this unit step good boy All right, show me the way. Let's go. <laughs> and we go and we call and go and call, go and call. Nothing. You can see forever out here. Looking, walking, looking, glassing from high knobs. Get into the divide in the next big basins and glass and glass and glass and Finally, just in the later part of the evening, we saw two cows and two calves down below us. Well, I've glassed everywhere I can think of, over here, over there, over there, and we saw four elk, thanks to Dale, the camera operator here. Probably could have snuck down there and shot one, but I, you know, it's still day three of the hunt. I, we got eight days. I, I might come to regret that, but. Right now I don't. It's been slow and because of that, we're making the decision to pack up camp and leave. We're gonna head out, going to relocate. And we're gonna head to another area to where we know uh, we can either call them in or we can uh, you know, get on some different elk. And, and in this place, we're, we're not gonna bring the llamas. We're gonna take the llamas back to bow. We're gonna have a camp at a trailhead but it's gonna be a trailhead where we can drive 10 miles on the Forest Service Road that way or 10 miles this way or whatever. This is totally a different landscape than what we were hunting earlier. The country is super thick and you can't see very far, but these elk can't see either. If you get a view of an elk, he's within range. Now, whether or not you'll have a shooting lane is another thing. First morning down here, we stopped and we called at this parking area. And got a bugle response down below us. And I'm like, oh man, I don't like going in there from above because the morning thermals. But the drainage is like this, and there's a ridge that makes a big arc over here. I told the guys, if we take this ridge down and make this big arc, we can get underneath the bull with the thermals. And uh, we hear a second bugle down there. Hmm, this doesn't really sound like a, an elk. Yeah, I know, I, I want to chase it, but that sounded like the front end growl of a, of a bugle too. But I'm always of the school of like, you go after every bugle. If you run into a hunter, you run into a hunter. And we're thinking we're pretty close to this bull at this point. Um, Randy dips off on the other side of the ridge, starts cow calling, bugling. Down. 
we hear a bugle, and this one, I was like, this is for real a bull. We just heard a bugle not too far from here, kind of in the area where we think this elk may be. So Randy's going to drop behind. Dale and I are going to go into this uh, cover. And we're set up perfect, and we hear crunch, crunch, crunch. There he is. You hear that? Yeah, he's gone. I'm getting excited. I'm sitting there looking, and then all of a sudden. Oh, it's on it. Out pops a guy, uh, another hunter. And, you know, that's just the way it goes out here sometimes on public land. You, uh, you share the woods with other hunters. He had came in from the road below us and had been working up. Uh, and working up on another bull. And it was probably one of those bulls that we heard in the morning. A uh, really cool guy, Daniel. Come to find out, uh, since he moved here five years ago or so, that's kind of become one of his favorite spots to hunt also. And uh, it's been one of my favorite spots for years and years. Just didn't work. <clears throat> There's bugle and elk in here, which is cool. And then we went and just did a whole bunch of discovery. What happens very often in these places with a lot of these logging roads is the old queer cuts start growing up and they have really good elk feed in them. And so the elk will go in bed either off to the side or down below or up above, depending on how they use the thermals. I don't know, 7.15 or so, we walk out and we get a response. that the light was getting low. We knew that our time was kind of running out. But uh, we thought he was a lot closer than what he actually was. Sneak out to the lip, bugle down there. Yeah, he's on the other, other ridge. Yeah, he's on the other ridge. Well, he's all the way down and across halfway up the other side, and I've been through that before. I've dropped out here before. It would take us a half hour to get them on. Okay, yeah. And I told Michael, I said, they're just they're not enough light. We're not going to be able to make that work. Well, maybe we'll catch them tomorrow or something. I don't know. There's an easy path. There's a trail that goes right here. Now we had a plan for the morning at day two. I uh, went to bed. We woke up and went right back to that spot. We, he wasn't there this morning. We, could, we didn't hear him. He must have gone up and left. So we kept going, kept going, kept going, calling, and we're calling. bugled our way up a little bit here, a little bit there. And I said, I know this other little pocket. It's near a highway, <laughs> a lot of people overlook it. Yes, sir. Don't have to We'll find out. We didn't walk 500 yards from the trailhead 
and I did a couple cow calls and all of a sudden just a few hundred yards above us the bull lets it go. That's a, that's a bull elk. That's a bull elk over here and we got a great win for it. Michael, he, he all of a sudden like, I want to kill that thing. And he's just going through the trees. He's fired up. When make a set up, Randy starts cow calling, cow calling. Dale and I are making our move down the, down the drainage to get in position. And this bull, he was really far off and now he's down in the bottom. And now it sounds like he's working his way up the ridge towards me. He's right there, he's going to Randy. So they gotta come up where I am. I think that those guys would have been on a perfect line if the elk would have stayed. Did you see him? And they move out in front. I don't think this bull is more than 60 or 70 yards away the last time he bugled. and the bull just didn't come on the direction that we anticipated him to. I think he just came into the cow calls, knew something wasn't right, didn't see a cow, didn't smell a cow. Got a little bit of wind or something, he just was like, you know what, I've played this game before, I don't, I don't like this. And he just slowly walked off. I think he just got close and realized that there weren't cows here. It was a cool encounter, even though we didn't get to see him. I thought that that was going to happen. But we know where he is. So if we can get there, you know, four in the afternoon, while well, I still have that strong uphill thermal, then we can pinpoint where he is and we can use that to our advantage. Well, we went back that afternoon and went way up trying to think, okay, he probably bedded up on these ridges above. Let's go up there and get at his elevation. We went up there and we called, and we called, and we called, and we called. Not a single response. We know this elk is in here. We're starting to make a pattern on him, and we're really starting to put our eggs in one basket. We're, we're kind of focusing on this elk. So the third morning, we get up, drive up to the trailhead, and as quick as we step out of the truck, we don't even have to bugle or make our own calls. Man, it's a bull right over there. We're waiting for it to get light enough. Right now, if you walk into the dimmer, you can't see anything. Once we get ready to do it, we better be ready because we're going to get one chance as loud as it is. I tell Michael, you go out there, I'm just gonna keep walking back and forth in here, trying to make enough cow calls that at some point in time, he'll be comfortable coming around.
And after a while, once again, the wind starts changing. He just super, super patient, waited and waited and waited and would not commit until the wind gave him the benefit instead of us the benefit. I wish I was smart enough to tell you how you kill that bull, but obviously I haven't figured it out. Wow. He definitely has the advantage here. Yeah. He grew up here. Yeah. He knows every, he's walked every one of these trails multiple times in his life. So we pull out and we go on this ATV trail way up above him. Now we have the thermal in our direction and it's a pretty long haul to get up there. And we call and we call and we call. He just wouldn't respond. Sorry, I just led you on a hour long walk for, for nothing. Worth coming up here, checking them out. Always got to check. And I know to the audience, they're probably like, well, Randy, you're always along a road or an ATV trail. One, there's roads everywhere in this unit. And so you really can't get away from it. You're never more than about a mile from a road or a trail. That next morning we show up, uh, even earlier, we were starting to hone in on what this bull was doing every day. And as we, you know, get out of the truck, we hear him bugle a couple times. He's only three or 400 yards away. Let's wait till we get some light. Randy's on the bow this morning and I'm gonna try and call him in and hopefully I don't screw it up for him. So we're gonna go up a little bit and see if we can hear him. But uh, we got a better st strategy for this morning. So we hear something coming up the road. Tell the guys, oh, let's just jump in the brush here. If it's an ATV guy, we don't want him to stop and talk to us or whatever. We just want him to go on his way. Well, it turns out to be someone in a truck <laughs> and they go up and park where we'd parked the morning before. And we can hear the car doors banging and stuff. And all of a sudden the bull lets out a bugle. I'm like, oh no, don't do that. They're probably having a great morning though. <laughs> they're probably just like, oh my God, we just pulled over. <laughs> Which is, you know, that's, they're probably having so much fun. Those guys wind up chasing those, that elk and you share the woods with other hunters. And that's, you know, that's just part of what happens sometimes. And as we're driving down this old logging road, Michael's like, wait, 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 there's a grouse. Boom, boom. Got him. Young male rough grouse. Well, we're thinking this is a really, really good day. We got two grouse. Yeah, we didn't get our elk, but we got two grouse. We just keep thinking, all right, where are the elk? I think what we ought to do, Michael, before we take this route, we should walk up here about 100 yards and blow the float. Since we're not going that way. Kind of morale is getting a little low. It stinks sometimes when you can't find elk. Sometimes you come out and you don't hear them. Sometimes you come out for multiple days and you don't hear them. So I told Michael, you know what, let's, let's bail out of here. That, that bull from day two, that evening, let's go back to that spot. I 
we've gone to multiple spots and usually we're good for like one for five but hey can't complain in the elk woods so our morale's kind of low but we're driving down and there's a whole bunch of grouse i don't know how many but a lot of them Marine goes oh my god look at that there's a bunch of grouse right there oh, right here michael Got him right there. That one's done. And then uh, Dale's right behind me. I squat down, shoot another one. Oh yeah. Heard more. Got my third one. Like right after that, it was wild. Six grouse today. <laughs> Never seen this guy so jacked. <laughs> So we end up with six grouse in one day, which that's, uh, that's a victory of the greatest degree. But we don't have an elk. I've spent you know, four and a half days in here, just stuck in my rut that I've focused on a horizontal band where I've always seen elk in the past. Well, those elk are moving this way because to satisfy their needs of better forage in this super drought year, the lower, so the lower slopes are closer to water, especially on the north sides, and that's where the cows are. So they're moving from up here down to here. And the bulls are coming in and finding the cows. I've known Randy for, this is my fifth season filming for him. And this is the first time that we've gotten to hunt together as a team. And while we may not have filled our tags, it's been, you know, a really, really great experience for me. I've learned a ton. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground. We've hiked in areas. We've driven all across the land, bugling, cow calling doing our best to find these elk and you know sometimes it just doesn't work. The, the reason the successes are so euphoric, so exciting, is because of weeks like we've had. Hunting is getting your butt handed to you. I think about what this hunt has been, and I hope it's accomplished what the goal was, sharing a special place with Michael and Dale. And for him to take me into these areas and show me and, and explain to me and tell me all the stories that have happened in the past, and I feel really lucky to be able to call him my boss and a hunting mentor.